Throughout my previous two videos, I got to explain both how logic gates work and how the lamps work. However, I never got to explain what a faulty lamp is or how to use it, and therefore I decided to dedicate this entire video just to faulty lamps. If you've experimented with faulty lamps before, you might have realized you can put them on top of other lamps. This will also make the logic gate turn blue, which means it now has its entirely own function. It doesn't matter which logic gate you put the faulty lamp on top, they're all going to work in the same way. So, how do they work then? Well, they're intended to be used as randomizers, however they have so many functions past that. The way they work is that they look at which lamps are below them, and then it picks a random one of those lamps. And if the lamp it picks is turned on, then it's going to send a signal. However, if the lamp is turned off, nothing is going to happen. So in this case, where one of the lamps are off and one of the lamps are on, that means there's a 50% chance that the lamp is going to change its state. However, there's also a 50% chance that nothing is going to happen. So let's try to run this and see what happens. And exactly like we expected, the lamp only changes some of the times I press the switch, not every time. If we do an experiment where we have more on lamps than we have off lamps, then we should notice how the lamp gets activated more times than it doesn't get activated for the reason that it picks a random gate. So there's basically 4 in 5 chance that it's going to change states and 1 in 5 chance nothing is going to happen. And so you might be wondering, where does their second use come from? Well the interesting thing is if you only have one lamp below the faulty lamp, then it's going to start getting some weird properties. You can tell how if the lamp is on and we just connect a switch to the faulty lamp, it's always going to send an output. However, if we now put down a second switch and connect that to the lamp below the faulty lamp, then you'll notice something interesting where the top switch will only send a signal if the bottom switch is active. So it almost acts like a one-way gate. If you remember the lock door that we built last time, you know we used an AND gate to do this, where the top gate locks the bottom gate. However, we have the issue that it doesn't matter which gate you use to lock the other one, you can use the bottom switch as a lock and use the top switch to open the door as well. We might not actually want this, so to fix that we can simply just replace the top lamp with a faulty lamp. And that's going to fix all of it. There's more cool tricks you can do with faulty lamps. For example, you could have the faulty lamp connected to the lamp below it, or have the logic gate connected to the lamp above it. And doing both of those things will give it special properties. In this case, I've connected the switch to both the faulty lamps and the normal lamp. And this basically halves the input. I press the switch twice for the lamp to change once. So what would happen if I build a second one of these? and then I connect the output of the first one to the input of the second one. Well, it would be the half of the half, meaning the output of the second one is going to be one quarter the input of the switch. So I need to press the switch four times for the second lamp to change. Now that I've connected a bunch together, we have something that, well, basically is a binary counter. But I'll cover more about the binary system in a future episode because that's all we have time for in this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. If you haven't watched the two previous episodes, go watch them. And I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.